strike so much in the opening as we always do. Well, it starts with the lag to try and get on that breaking in, and it's going to be SBB. <laughs> Took a little speed off there to open, Scott. Yeah, I'm wondering if he's just concerned about accuracy at the beginning. I agree, Jeremy. I wonder if the further he goes, the more power he'll get. Well, you could see okay, Max, down, there was side spin on that cue ball, and it wasn't something off a kiss off a ball. It was directly off the one. I mean, you couldn't ask for more to get started in the final of the U.S. Open, but uh, we'll keep track of that break shot. Smashing atmosphere in the arena. Already our referee. Ben Taylor Fuente has asked some members of the crowd to quieten down there. Overexcited. First rack. Yeah, and the nerves are going. I think he wants to get in position to draw straight back off the pink for a combination on the purple five into the seven. So, oh, did he fluke it? He didn't. A little quick with the delivery there. Yeah, and we just touched on it. The heart rate probably through the roof, even for Shane Van Boney. And this is those side pockets we talk about. You catch that point at all, it's not going. Well, Extension. talked about Extension. it earlier that, you know, I think Shane has improved so much leaving the air behind. That's going to be tested early, especially if Fetter can get out here. I don't think this is too tricky other than knowing what the three is going to do. It's after the seven is deposited. Get this out of the way early. It's a 30 second shot clock with one 30 second extension per player per rack and Borscht taking advantage of his right now. I thought he would play more of the double kiss, uh, playing the three a little more heavy. That way, not only securing the seven a little more, but maybe making the three a bit easier. Yeah, Jeremy talking about catching that three full. I have to agree. Maybe a bit of right English instead of what he used, which was left, but that's okay. He should recover just fine. And that's that straight angle, or let's say no angle. Pink four to screw the cue ball back. Where he's got it at now, it'd be just fine. Yeah, the only way this ball really becomes missable is if you try to pull it back too far. Like Jeremy said, just keep it below the six. Well, he felt good, Jeremy, and decided to come on all the way back. Yeah, well, what happens is when you simplify, you usually just put a little better stroke on it, and you get a little more out of the cue ball. But a real good sign, not like, like Scott said, not really a missable ball for these guys, but just to feel that good draw stroke early certainly means a lot. You just get the feeling, Forrest, not going to make too many mistakes this match. Well, he's, you know, had the upper hand in the later matches of the tournament. As far as getting opportunities, I thought it was fairly one-sided in that semifinal. But sometimes, you know, when you're getting the rolls, you know, most would say it's easier to play, but sometimes not so much. You, you tend to make a big mistake somewhere. It's kind of like a buildup in a sense. It's a huge miss on the three for SVB. at the cue ball yeah, so right, it, yeah. right yeah and it made him come back quick a little bit and then you tend to kind of die at the cue ball with the stroke that's the only reason you could have a miss like that and he missed it by a country mile what an awful shot what do you do here Jeremy you going at it he's edging it he might be edging it or banking it Not sure which normally he gets down like that he's edging it Oh, he played it back under. It's a hard one not to shoot at, but it was just funny, right? He either had to stiff it with some speed or take a real low percentage bank. 
And we've seen Fetter knock a few of these in, and he hits them more to pocket speed, which is kind of surprising. It's going to be interesting to see how he plays this. A little less pressure on the bank, it seems like at times, especially in big moments. Oh, that's wide. This is one of those rare opportunities for Van Boney. Well, it's understandable. I mean, I ain't gonna lie, I was pretty clammy before this match started. I'm still pretty nervous about it. These guys, you know, the heart's gotta be really going. Oh, it makes for good TV. There's no doubt they're both wanting this a little too much right now. Right, watch out for the corner because he's not going to slow roll it. Yeah, and one that he'll process, of course, he's so great because he can leave the mistake behind and knows a lot about his technique so I'm sure he recognized what the problem was in the stroke it was definitely not the aiming he said I really think it gets him to where there's really not going to be many misses we had success on the first break Jeremy he's putting outside spin yeah he definitely took speed off and one dry break like that I think he'll change well, he drew way above. Let's get another look. I believe he drew above. That's been his downfall as of late. Yeah, but at a lot lighter speed, it's going to grab, right? And just how much of the lighter break, and it's not light by any means, don't get me wrong, but much lighter than we're used to seeing. How often have you seen him do it? Not very often. In terms of the mistakes we saw in the first rack, I think it was because it was the first rack. This is a massive match. Can't overstate. You know, I think if you're going to see errors like that, it is during the settling down period. I think as the match goes on, the quality will rise. Yeah, going back to that break, I also think, Jeremy, that might have been a bit of a miss hit. Could have been. Could have been for sure. Should cut the one onto the pink here, I thought, and just track the cue ball behind the nine. Yeah, I like that a lot. Oh, he caught a double kiss on a pretty simple play. So maybe not over that nine ball in the first rack. Yeah, and I like your choice. Just chip that to the pink and come down. You had a lot of room for cover. Yeah, hard to see in the slow motion as much as, as in regular speed, but. Could cut the one and try to come across using the two nine. It looks pretty natural to me to where you got a lot of room for error holding the one on the eight, whether you hit rail first or ball first. From distance, I really like to pick out something natural if I can. Yeah, I like that, Jeremy. What about crossing the one over and going towards the eight as well, if they'll give us the other view? Just crossing the one over oh, towards that's the great. purple. That's great. That's actually a little more friendly. Q ball. See you later. Foul strike. Yeah, so both players, in my opinion, Jeremy, kind of overlooking a couple of obvious things that don't, don't seem so obvious to them right now. Well, that, the main thing is, you know, when the pressure's on and you know it's on both players, you want to simplify as much as you can. So I would say Chain might not have saw those shots, but that's hard to believe just because he's he pretty much recognizes everything, really. So we always talk about it. Nothing like ball in hand to get you settled into a match. Well, that's exactly right. Just what the doctor ordered for Gorst. I don't see a lot of trouble here either. Yeah, I read my mind, Scott. I mean, real friendly layout as well. Get to shoot a couple shots you like to shoot. A little, maybe a little inside spin on a couple, a couple stuns. Kind of falls dead straight here. There is a little bounce. Good thing the pink isn't too far away. Yeah, if that rests directly on the rail, it could be real funny. This is going to be fine, especially on the slick table. 
Red's off a of hair, so he can play real first if he wants. thing going forward here is you just kind of want to stay off the rail on the green six. Yeah, it's a little off angle, but it's actually when you're close to the ball and the slick table kind of goes through the ball pretty well. So it shouldn't be any problems getting on the six. Visit the decision by SVB to go back and forth with the cue ball on the one versus a couple options that were, well, a lot more basic, to be honest. Yeah, I'd usually like to dig on the cue ball two rails here. Fetter does more than rolling it, but we'll see. Looks like it's a high ball, though. Wow, he went up and down. Awesome shot. Surprised me, though, a bit. Yeah, that's a sign. He might be feeling a little better after the missed nine. Well, to be also, the way Fetter thinks, it may be something like, I need this stroke right now. You know what I mean? He knows He's what's going on with himself, and, and it wasn't obviously an out of line shot by any means. Was a bit thin. One nine ball has been missed. Another bank went astray. With well, that conventional nine ball, Bush descends. Yeah, well, there's a good look. Jeremy directly into the middle. He's been so good at that lately. Yeah, I'll tell you, the blue two is dressed up. Wasn't quite as firm, in my opinion, as we saw earlier, but I don't think that that was intentional, right? Sometimes you just don't get the exact same speed. Does he have a natural to go by the two, or does he have to draw one rail over? Or, excuse me, go by the eight? Or, or can, does he have to draw in the yeah, position? Yeah, that's a good question. And I mean, just at first glance, it looks like he can miss the eight, but maybe he's going into it. Whatever he decides to do, it'll probably be the right thing. I think he's going to have to draw, Jeremy. Yeah, he's drawing. Watch him drop the tip. Got a nice bounce here off the second cushion. I think that's probably pretty thought of and pretty key. to use a lot of the outside ball. I think he punches down here. One, two to the left side of the six, but not certain. That was pretty comfortable. It seems to be his go-to, that middle outside ball where he's punching. He avoids inside English at all costs most of the time. Yeah, and most players, you know, they have their preference, right? You see like a Efren Reyes or a Ralph Suke, they really were more like natural angles, add a little spin to carry the cue ball a little more, a little less. For today's players, you may see them, especially the Europeans, it seems like they seem to play a little more stun. Of course, better course in American. But good stuff. Many players would have been decidedly unsettled by missing the nine in the first rack. But Gorscht is made of stern stuff. I 
think we're going to have to see one of the best performances ever out of Shane Van Boney. For some reason, this match, I feel like Federer really wants it. I feel like he's going to play very consistent after getting those little blunders out of the way. Thank you, Rack Four. Yeah, Federal the consistency of this break. Two racks to one. It's something that I feel like SBV, SVB fans are a little concerned of. Very consistent, Jeremy. Yeah, absolutely. Forgot. We missed the one, but he got other one, another one down. The one's going to open. It's definitely a tester. Leaving out in the middle of the table and got to make a decision with the cue ball. Yeah, tester and psychologically <coughs> testing because he has to play to the same pocket as the missed nine ball in rack one. And this is so off angle. You see what he's eyeing. The nine ball near the side. All right, putting a lot of force on the cue ball, right, to get at the nine here. I'm, I think he's just got to rely on his ability and roll the cue ball forward towards the pink and take the shot on the two. Yeah, unless he's got more angle than than what we see. But I mean, it really seems like he's forcing and possibly splitting his focus if he goes at it like this. Yeah, but he's feeling it. You heard the one hit the pocket and that's the one you don't Shane, right? You come off a mistake and not saying he's going to make many. But I really like going for the win there on the run out. You miss the ball, you miss the ball. Yeah, I can't agree more, Jeremy. I, I mean, obviously we're up here for a reason, right? But, but at the same time, with your experience, he could have smoothed that one in and just kind of gone up left of the four. This is just uncharacteristic, but it was close, so maybe the one grabbed a little bit, Jeremy? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what happens is the cue ball kind of slides a little into the object ball and it ends the grab a little. And I would guess what Shane was thinking, if, if there anything that crept in his head, is how the tables played overall. Not quite as tight, so balls have been sliding in. He felt like he had a bit more room for error. Just going back to the original ghost choice, it wasn't as though the, the kiss shot onto the nine was high percentage. Well, I mean, you want to try and make the one, but the thing is, it's low percentage and it gives you nothing on the two really. So I think maybe just go after the nine if you're gonna go after it and ignore the one a bit. I know that sounds a little amateur, but you know, put your focus somewhere. Like Scott said, not splitting a decision really. But hey, it's the finals, right? I mean, give these guys a little bit of a break. They're, they're uh, definitely human. Yeah, we really make it sound easy up here. I wouldn't be able to breathe. Now over seven a bit. Extension cool. But the one thing he commented on is leaning on his fundamentals and the opener on the one was kind of, you know, under that context in my mind. When Jeremy says over the seven, I mean, really, even just the body can get into your mind, right? The seven being there. 
And usually you got to bend the left arm a little awkwardly when it's like this. It's just the fact that he knows it's there. I don't think it's going to cause a problem. Great look here. Confident stroke there on the four. He yeah, just wants to keep his angle here on the five. The missed nine ball aside in the first rack. He's such a, a confident and reliable, dependable potter. Just concentrating on the run out initially. Why not? Hardly ever misses. Fact is, though, he's got a second chance, a second bite. At the cherry. Put a real good stroke into that ball. Three one to Fedorgorst. Three rack semi final of the recent Helsinki Open in his native Finland. Rack number five. Fedorgorst to break. Hitting three racks to one. Yeah, and like last game, Jeremy said he did miss the one. Missed it high. Well, yeah. Exited quickly there, Scott. Yeah, the adjustment was made right. And a 3 9 combination laying nicely for maybe later in the rack. Just before we get into this, it's all sacrilegious what's going on at the moment. Carl Boy is wearing a Stars and Stripes plastic top hat. The ultimate American beta when he was in the Moscow Cup, and now he's switched sides, it seems. Well, he loves America. We talked about that. But the more surprising thing is delivering coffee. That's the odds on underdog right there. Yeah, that is the underdog, Jeremy. Actually buying and delivering coffee. Yeah, funny here now. Still a little awkward safety. Those have been the ones that have gotten both players. Pushing straight through, catching the seven could be problems. Yeah. He's going to tear apart that combination, but he's going to deliver a shot. Nothing easy for the five time champion, but I know he's wanting to bury a big one. Yeah, how's Shane feeling here? You know, he's going to hit this with some type of speed. Yeah, and I saw a little of the crazy eyes right there. That's a good sign. Kind of open up a bit. Extension, cool. Like Scott said, there will be a thump if this blue two does get made. Oh, he deserved it, that little shot. In the three, it would have been pretty cold if it would have gotten funny. See Fetter shaking his head in the background during that shot. He knows that SVB gets up for those. Yeah, anything with distance and power at the center cue ball has proved to be deadly. You know, and Phil, you've been around a lot of sports, of course, you know, to covering all kinds. And when it comes to the world champions, the real elites, sometimes a mistake like on that one ball, taking it for granted, can kind of wake them up. And I wouldn't doubt that happens here. Yes, for the greats, annoyance can be used as positive energy. For the lesser lights, annoyance can corrode a challenge. Yeah, it's the same thing when you're prepared and not prepared and probably have the most two prepared players on the planet here in this final. Just wants some type of an angle to get down for the nine. Staying below the eight. Never really any trouble here.
kind of like running this to the short side a bit more than the draw. The nerves are going. I like just the more of a roll of the ball. Rack six. Shane Van Boney to break. Trading three racks to two. I think you can cover your ears. It's going to start to get a little louder with this break shot from Shane. I think it's the correct thing to do. Yeah, I don't mind it, Jeremy. I just think he really needs to bear down on the aim point. A little more smash. Not as much side spin. Must it's not only going to be a difficult push out, but very limited. Can't get to the top half push of the out. table. Yeah, a couple times last match, he caught the bottom half of that nine. Cue ball ended up over here. Yeah, you know, he's a very unique push out player. And what I mean by that is most players, when they're when you have to push out, you're you're at a deficit. You know, you're behind. And a lot of players will tie a ball up where he normally pushes out to the most difficult position on the table and just bets he can execute where maybe you can't. Yeah, to your point, like that right here, yeah. really. Like, please pass it back. That's a lot of pressure if you're Fetter. So it's gone from smash to who will grab the tactical initiative. You almost couldn't blame Fetter for passing this one. I don't care who's coming back to the table. I don't think it's going to be tactical if it's Shane. I think it's getting rolled in the upper right corner, and Shane's trying to, trying to get out. Shane, please play again. Yeah. A little gamesmanship, maybe knowing he's never taken that shot. Yeah. Sat, sat Shane in the chair for a minute. Is the purple a factor for the cue ball in the left middle, or will it miss it? I mean, this isn't easy, Jeremy. It's very, very difficult to roll to the top right, because I think the purple could be at play. Yeah, it could be a problem, but I don't think there'll be that much speed. Extension cool. The thing is, you know, he may have not thought it all the way through because it was so limited where he could push out just being just because he was so hemmed up on the pink. Yeah, that's exactly right. I was actually curious if he was going to do or thought about doing anything with the six, kind of tying it up since he was right next to it. Whatever it is, it'll be all right. Why not? Well, he was going to the top right corner there, but he'll take it. Boy, he wasn't going to sell out hitting it slowly, huh? Can he creep? in behind the six and kind of use the eight and five here, Jeremy? Yeah, I think I might try and bump the six here, though, when I come up with the cue ball. Put a little more speed. Go. Red three's got to go. Pretty good. Pretty good. Did you get a little bump on the six? Yeah, and you got the right bump on the seven as well. Extension cool. One of the best in the business at this. Is he trying to hit this with a high ball and snooker him behind the seven? Yeah, I think more of his focus is just laying that three over on the left long rail, trying to keep the cue ball somewhere in that area, Jeremy. Yeah, and you know, that's a fair point, Scott. If you play it all the way to the middle of that left rail, you can just let the cue ball slide down the right rail, maybe using the nine. Oh, he's elevating. He's, he's trying to bring it back. Yeah, he's elevated. He's trying to bring the cue ball down to the bottom. Foul strike, all in hand. Well, we were both fooled. We didn't realize there was that much curve just Please to get the to the rail. Yeah, he was snookered a lot more than we could tell.
which I don't know about y'all's opinion, but oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I swear to you, as he was over that, I'm thinking the alignment's not right here. I honestly thought he was going to overcut that. It's almost like he never really even looked at the three. It's like his eyes were always on the four six. Yeah, and I tell you what you can get involved in out on the slick table, especially is let me use the side rail, you know, instead of understanding you're going to hit the ball pretty pure anyways, especially with ball in hand. Uh oh, crazy stuff, crazy stuff here early. Uh, what is going on here? The crowd clapping. Please start the clock. Fennel Gorsh is a big favourite, but Shane Van Boning is a sentimental favourite here. They want to see history. Yeah, of course, everybody wants to see number six, right? Yeah, absolutely. And He'll knock the six in here with the combo to get started, but you know, I had a vicious scratch in my match, my last one, but that one was my fault. I leaned that one a little unlucky there to come from off the seven in the middle of the table. You had to apply inside spin on the three. Well, touching on you, Jeremy, I actually saw that scratch. I watched most of that match. Yeah, I respect you saying it's your fault, but it didn't have to go that way. Neither here nor there. Not happy with the behind the back trick shot. Gray when it comes off a little embarrassing when it doesn't. He's got the hair funny though. He's got to address this with spin one way or the another. See the inside just a little bit, but it, it's always touchy because you don't want to fall straight on the seven and then have to shoot the eight from the cushion. All right, I like him putting speed on this and coming below the eight. And that way he puts that nice stroke on it. Yeah, just come all the way over. And that's the hit, Jeremy. Still going to land funny. That is the 50. And what we mean by that is very natural scratches if you level out the cue going into the side or corner. Maybe fortunate to get that one inch bounce. Looks like he's in the middle of him, Jerry. Well, and he avoided the scratch with speed. How do you pull that trigger in the U.S. Open final? Into middle pockets that we've repeatedly said give nothing away at all. And yet still he's not on the nine as he wanted to be. I think he may bank it, really. Some speed on it as well. That's what he's going to do. That's a cue ball here. Cue ball's okay. He's okay. He's okay. Shane Van Boning producing a couple of crowd pleasers on eight and nine. Three ball. Wow. Well, considering the awful scratch in the last rack and how fortunate that was. Pretty nice starter here on the one to try and regain the lead. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I just feel like as good as he hit those, those balls didn't do a lot, even though the spread looks great. One, two, and three pretty much. Formalities, aren't they? Yeah, the real work is to, to the six, and you can see the pink four and five pretty close to each other, so no excuses here. Where does he want to be, Jeremy, on this three? Does he just want to be out in the center somewhere between the four and nine? Yeah, I think because he can handle some distance on the pink four, so it doesn't matter quite as much on the three. I think ideal, ideally maybe between the uh, five and eight, kind of that path. That's where I like right there myself. So, and what happens is when you train like he does, of course those ob obstacles are there, right? So it looks worrisome to kind of like a spectator, but he just knows where the ball's going. Yeah, you get a real feel when you're at the table. 
Well, this is premium. He should be able to get fairly close. Oh, and close to where he wanted, I think. This is actually a little awkward. Probably going to have to come below the nine. Might even have to take the it's five in the top left if you don't want to introduce a miss and smooth this ball in. I don't know. He's good at drawing from this distance. Well, it's a funny forward stun. That would be ideal from here to get an angle on the five in the side to track the cue ball up top table and back down. The funny part about the stun, it's easy to catch a hair of the nine. Then everything can become kind of odd. Yeah, I think you're right. I think, I think he might actually pull this back. Hey, there's that no angle though and near the cushion. So big trouble. He's got to power this ball going forward three rails. Is there traffic? Not really. I, th I think the worry becomes the miss more than anything. I think he can get the path right. It's the lower but, left corner. A big pocket for the cue ball. Yeah, I think a miss the upper right upper left corner could be. Oh, he hit it sweet. He's going to get by him. Oh. Two little flicks and an awkward stretch, even for a tall man. Yeah, I was trying to see if that eight was in play. He really bent this cue ball. Look at how airborne it was off the strike. The problem was a really weak three ball, wasn't it, for position? Yeah, I was a little shocked he played it with inside. I thought he would chip the right part and come up with outside because you're already in line as soon as you hit the three, really. He's going for the bank because the safeties have been a little off. Kept it simple. Well, I think, Jeremy, you were right until the buzzer started. I think he changed his mind to the safety once that buzzer kicked in. I like the kick here. I really do. I think the way the eight, nine, and seven are in the middle of the table can pose a lot of problems. And I cool. really think he's going to always hit the kick. Oh, I can't agree more. How much distance can you get from the six and cue ball if you don't make this ball? To begin with, getting over the seven is going to be very difficult. Got it inside. Foul strike. Ball in hand. Yeah, Jeremy, that's what I'm talking about, right? You said the same thing. The kick, a lot of good things could have happened. Yeah, he could have pocketed the six. I think he could have got the cue ball on the Please bottom. But, Theo, how many times of late have we seen fouls for players? We just kind of assume they're going to get over those, and it seems like they're growing more and more. Yeah. The captain of the U.S. Moscow League team, Skylar Woodward, actually played two in pretty quick succession in one match. Yeah, not just here at the U.S. Open. We've seen it in previous majors this year. Yeah, going back to that kick, though, a lot of really good things there. I, I don't know about that decision, obviously, catching the seven. Forced another opportunity to take off. And to be, you know, to be fair, I mean, might not think exactly like these guys do, right? They're, they're looking, hey, I'm going to make this, and that's the confidence they have. So just another level at times. Not pinpoint here on the eight. I wonder why I would say anything else. It, like, we've seen a lot of crazy things so far in just what will be seven games. Earlier this week, he had a nine ball like this, and he hit it into the extreme right-hand jaw as we're looking. Just about went. That one was a lot more accurate. And so, Fedor Borscht regains the lead. In Saudi Arabia, when Fedor got the win, I'll tell you what, that event during that final was so intense. We can only hope for something similar here. Thank you, Rack 8. Fedor goes to break, leading four racks to three. Jeremy, this is 
always been the concern if you're in the SVB camp. That one seems to be consistent way too often. It's getting action you know, on the blue, too. It's really not getting tied up. It's coming open now. Looks like a perfect shot on the two. Maybe somewhat straight to get on the three, and I only say that because the four six is a little funny. Oh, he's got an angle, so he can get down there nice and heavy on the red three. Broken run in rack three, and he's got every opportunity to duplicate that in this. Yeah, it looks like he can just really has options. He can just go straight through to the side rail, dropping below. It's going to be a four six combo here in a few shots. This all stems from a dry break from SVB last game. So he's going to play the 4 6, Jeremy. Yeah, absolutely. Really, not many pockets uh, for the pink four. Not really things that you would consider. That's why that good starter, because, you know, we always talk about the differences when these guys get in control and get that first positional shot in line. Pretty much stay in line. How's the four going towards the side rail here? Yeah, you gotta wonder if the cue ball's kind of going towards the nine. Basically, if he's a little steep. Doesn't act like it though. No, he's gonna be all right. He hits it easy, he'll be all right. Yeah, that's where being close to his work really helped. So good at this shot. If he wants to come back and forth above the nine, he can, but he's really good with that low drag. Yeah, I think it'll be a couple rails, though. It's really natural and no problems. Gets him on that natural side of the five he wants, I think, which is a hair more. He's going to really survey the side pocket. I don't blame him. Doesn't want to come up the, off the left side rail and fall on the rail with the cue ball. And doesn't want to force it to the right of the brown. Yeah, you can't do much better than that. I think he's going to the long rail above the right side pocket. Oh no, he's perfect. Second time, he leads by a couple of racks. It was 3-1 initially. Now Father Barry Berman has his name on the trophy. It will be lifted by one of these two right now. The favourite is the man breaking off. Yeah, Shannon, extremely classy. And he repeat. Yeah, look at this break. Not going to have a good look on the two this time, Jeremy. Well, that's the thing, right? That's why you got to stay settled in your chair. It's a scary thing, Federer Gorse breaking the balls and with a couple game lead, and Shane knows what he's capable of as well as anyone. You know, it's always two to three parts of these races to 13 in the finals. We saw a little bit of this in Saudi, and Kachi hung tough and caught a late lead. Uh, that's an excellent point. Even when they played about a week ago, it was like there was two to three parts every single day. So you know this is long from over, probably still several momentum swings. And I really feel that 
You know, some of these push-out situations could be the difference. I'd label, label Fetter Gorse the most efficient player on earth with an open layout, right? So I, I got him a little better than Shane in Shane, that regard. They lay tough, I like Shane, but I like Shane in these battles with the push-outs and the tactical side of things. just been in so many situations in these finals and seen so much. Got to believe the experience Hello, leaning on his in. side. Yeah, and he's giving this back. Doesn't that tell us that Fetter can't see the left side of the two or the left half? There you have it. Yeah, great look. And, you know, there's a couple different ways to play this depending it's on how you're cool. feeling. You know, you could cut the two and let it go two rails kind of underneath the five a little. Alban Ocean's real good at those types of shots, making it goofy as you bring the cue ball up table. I think most likely, though, it's going to be a soft one to the side rail. Let's see if SVB's decision proves correct. He's going for the make. He's going for the make. <laughs> wow, what a hit. That goes. Yeah, I was talking to someone about type of shot recognizing sometimes there's two ways there because you're cutting the ball right so it's gonna kind of be a soft ball going to the hole hard to hang it really very different to svb's magnificent two ball at a critical moment against filler but boy could it pay dividends yeah that's a bit much has a shot to the corner, but not easy. A little shocked he didn't stun over and take more of a cut for the lower left and maybe draw the cue ball. But if he gets perfect here, it certainly makes sense. Yeah, I have to agree with you. I'm a little surprised he didn't stun over. I'm gonna play safe here. Can he make the five? Well, I, I kind of didn't understand it just because the five did go, right? That's why he played shape. And, and uh, I think it was me and you, Phil, talking about at times a little conservative. He turned down several open pots in the semifinal against Niels Fine. Extension call. Yeah, especially after knocking in that big two ball right there to start this game. Yeah, I think he might have gone a little brain dead on the position there to the purple. It kind of messed with him, especially with the buzzer coming down. There you see it, the long power. Well, I mean, I know Shane really well. Of course, Scott, you know him even better, but I could see Shane saying to himself, and this is no lie, he didn't shoot at that? Kind of like, you know, what's he here to do? Yeah, to Jeremy's point, what does that tell Shane, right? That might really get him up. I was kind of surprised about everything that took place there. It's exactly what I was saying this afternoon. It's sometimes you get in love with preserving a lead and forget what you've got to do. Power on. <laughs> Shane Van Boning gifted rat nine. Trailing five racks to four. Big adjustment there. What's the three going to do? He's not thrilled with it. I think it helped him that he caught the point. Irregardless, Phil, it's a good sign for Shane. Yeah, look at the balls going down. The one, the two, the eight. Yeah, anytime he makes flush contact with the nine like that, the action on the balls just seem to be right. This is extremely thin. I don't even know if he's going to be able to play it. He might be going behind the six. Yeah. Did it get down enough or up enough? I think his reaction says it all. Wasn't happy. Extension cool. 
Yeah, the crowd clapping. I don't think Shane has him snookered. You can tell here, it's not even close. This ball's makeable. Seven could be a problem here coming down. When we see the stats for this match, Jeremy, already lots of mistakes in all departments are cropping up. Yeah, it's been a, a variety for sure, and a variety of ones we don't see very often. Uh, you know, it's missed ball that we're all going to do that, but a missed ball in hand. I think a few choices that were a little on the fence. Yeah, timing was way off there. Really snatched the backswing a bit. Yeah, did he catch it on the way in and out there, Jeremy? Uh, it sounded like it, Scott. I'd have to see it, but it def definitely sounded like like a double click kind of kind of hit on the three. And he was always, I think, concerned he was coming towards the seven as well. It was not a comfortable shot by any means in his defense. Yeah. Well, what would you pay to be a fly on the wall? In both these guys' brain at the moment. Well, I think it's pressure induced, but you have to say, neither of them thinking as clearly with such clarity as they normally do. Yeah, and really. You know, Shane hasn't gotten total control of the stroke yet. I mean, he's missed a few little safeties. The jump really has a little something to do with that also. And here he's gotten himself funny from nowhere. He's going to have to amp this up, and it's really easy to bend it. Oh, he's coming short side. Smart play. That's probably all he could do, actually. Yeah, really natural here. Just don't get into the cue ball too much. He's asked for the cue ball to get cleaned, which I'll let somebody else talk about. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jeremy, always pretty accurate with the stroke, but there was probably some Extension chalk on goal. the cue ball. And when you're going crossways towards the six like this, it's easy for the cue ball to grab and maybe throw it into the left long rail. Shane just wants to smooth this in. Stay heavy on it. Easy to overcut. Cue ball okay. He went across. I thought he would just kind of roll it in a little lighter, stay on the left. Now he's got to show us one, even if it's a safety. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. I thought he would just smooth it in like a less than medium pace. Well, to be fair, this commented, I don't think he has total control of the stroke yet, right? Very happy the way he struck the six, and the safety looks pretty good also. The kick behind it requires some swerve. Can you see the right side of it, though? Oh, I certainly think he can, but he's going to have to edge it nicely. Better Gorse, very, very good at this shot. Probably one of the most difficult shots at the pro level. Too heavy. Too heavy. And the thing on that shot is you really have to make a decision. Am I going to thin it and try and hold it and not go all the way up table? Or am I going to go ahead and go all the way to the end rail and get the seven out in space? But like you said, Scott, one of the most difficult shots there is. Double digits in terms of rocks completed. And I'll make a statement here. I've seen these two play an awful lot of pool this week. This will be a slugfest as well. But who will Rack hit 11. the home run? Shane Van Boney to break. Yeah, Scores Jerry. a tie by Rack. Great contact. He got flush with the nine. Last rack. Can you repeat it? Cue ball zigzagging. Needs a little more. Does have a look though. It may not be offensive, but I don't like at least not having to push out, right? Yeah, you mentioned the dry table. Do you think there's a chance this table could be a little wetter than normal with all the people in here and a little bit more play that it's had? 
Yeah, it's not the Moscone for sure, but it's definitely slicker. So you can't, you know, when you're out of line, you can't just check the cue ball to get back in so easily, you know. It's tend to fall on the rail a little bit more. Uh, probably a slight swerve there, throwing that ball in, not only trying to make it, but hold position on the pink. Got a gamble here, though, going either forward or drawing. Yeah, and I think he comes off the eight. There's a chance he could come back towards the seven off the left long rail. He might draw way above it. Hard to control the pace here, Jeremy. Yeah, the tendency, Shane especially, tends to overhit this draw off the other ball. It's easy to do. Oh, that was a sweet one there. So the mind's starting to get a little more intact. Yeah, that was pure as the driven snow. He's going to take the long ball on the six, Jeremy. Yeah, he's going to hold that angle. You know, that shot that you uh, should practice about 100 or two, var two variations a day if you're a pro player. Just that one rail out to the center. A little heavy there, right? A little much of the six. Yeah, it probably draws. In between the eight and nine for the eight in the left middle. Could if he can avoid the nine, he could come all the way out. Short bridge has got to be a soft one though. About to go in front for the first time since one nil. And getting on with it also. I don't like the looks of that. Marvin Hagler, Thomas Hearns, Larry Holmes, George Foreman, Mike Tyson, Roberto Duran. They've all gone into the squared circle in AC. This is a prize fight in pool terms. Yeah, Phil, there he flicked the nine. Stop That's how the cue out. ball ended down the stairs like it did, Jeremy. I think he can shoot the two. Does the three pass the eight in the lower left? It looks really tight. Yeah, I don't think he can depend on that unless he wants to simplify the two and then maybe elect to play a safety. I hope he goes for the gap, whether it's a lot of outside spin coming two cushions or maybe inside spin coming one rail down between the three eight. I kind of like the inside myself. The three maybe passes Scott, but it's hard to really figure for position on the four up the table unless you're just absolutely perfect. Just think it's tougher to make the ball with that tip inside. I don't think there's much miss going to happen from this guy from here on out. I really don't. Yeah, but that was more natural, right? Does the three really pass, though, with ease? If you remember, he shot a one ball in that semifinal that didn't really have a, a complete clear path and a lot of pressure on it uh, playing Josh Filler to end that match. I think here he's got to stun this or, or, or use the eight some kind of way as a safety. I don't know that he can shoot this. Can he shoot it? Does it go? Extension cool. Well, if you do want to shoot it, you actually need more speed. So he'll need to maybe play the, the pink in the middle. That way the three slides a bit. Well, if he's shooting it, he feels shoot like it. he can make it. I felt like it was extremely tight. He had a pretty good defensive play. He could have welded him up to the back of the eight by going forward there. Yeah, I think that reference of the shot he, I mentioned that he made really played a little part there. Probably a draw stroke he made. Oh, he can go forward, no problem. Yeah, and he's not his timing getting into the cue ball. And what happens is Extension you end up a little quick coming back, so you quit at the cue ball, and that's what's happening on a few strokes. Not the first time he's played a per three to four. Yeah, this is actually his bread and butter as well, though. He's going to cut it to the upper left, I believe, and hold that low outside ball. 
is one of his big strengths. That's why he's avoiding the top right here. Yeah, after you make that kind of stroke, though, without getting like an easy one to repair it a bit, you tend to get even quicker at times and could push this into the uh, top cushion. I feel like he's going to recover. And back down. And that was really hardly any spin. Decided to go two cushions so he could avoid the right, right part of the cue ball. Yeah, what kind of message does that send? The five-time champion. Well, we have another ad break after this game, and we should be right where all of us want to see it at six apiece. Yeah, even though a scrappy match, it's been extremely intense. I think for all of us, it's great. Three break and run out so far. Mistakes too numerous to chronicle. Two balls away from parity mid match. Very tough. Nothing has changed. 6-6. Six, six. US Open. I think the two is, well, it's covered up. And I'll tell you what, anytime he's been teased with an early nine ball, it's been hard for him to pass on it. Realistically, you're not a favorite with this combination, and I don't see much of a backdoor safety. Safety, excuse me. I suspect if he does shoot it, just kind of simplify it. And do your best to make it. Almost seemed like the safety was pretty easy and pretty routine, but maybe not. He's having to cut the two a bit so that gives him the touch on the cue ball. They're not quite as good. I'm on one rail on the eight, I think. He's going to leave the jump that he didn't want to leave. Yeah, SVB will like the look of this. Sat in his chair coming to the table. Probably thought it was going to be welded to the eight ball. And you can see that angle. He's just got to pop it over the green six. Yeah, you notice Fetter trying to check the cue ball as much as he could with side spin. Extension cool. Had a foul on a jump earlier that was, I think, a questionable decision. No question here. He's got to go. for Federer that was an unlucky scratch. This one tops that one, especially with the shot on the blue two. The injustice. And it was a double kiss on the brown seven. That did that scratch. So <laughs> even off after 12 games, we're still seeing even more.
we've seen so many potential turning points in this match that it's not turned out to be turning Thank points you. at all. Well, that really unfortunate scratch incurred by Shane Van Boning proved trouble for him. Yeah, it's bread and butter, two rails coming at the seven. This will lead us to what, our fourth lead change? Just barely halfway through the match? Yeah, Van Boning led 1 0. Gorscht went to 3 1. Van Boning got the lead back at 6 5, and now Gorscht is three balls away from regaining the advantage. to work out who was unlucky there. Right. Giving seven there. racks to six. Yeah, this is scary though. Position just because of the break shot. Watch for the blue two to track three rails towards the side if it doesn't get a kiss. side but the cue ball with a full eclipse no jump shot on offer and barely limited with the push yeah, three balls made and on the stats push push out call it's average balls on the rate was 1.3 that was actually higher than Shane's 1.1 1 .1. <coughs> can get to the top part of the table Shane made a funny decision early in this match. Scott and I had talked about a couple pretty easy kind of safeties from an odd position and had a big scratch. He's rolled out tough here. Nothing easy than this. Now does he push through on the blue two, trying to put it on the side rail and carry the cue ball into the purple? Just kind of got to control both the object ball and the cue ball. What he's looking at now, I think. Again, just go straight through the two, let it bank off the side cushion, the bottom, and come up on the left side rail, and go at the purple with the cue ball. Got to believe that's what Better is thinking. If he gets it back. Cool. Yeah, that's really the tendency, isn't it, Carl? Because you're so worried about overhitting that blue two, even into a bank shot, maybe some type of jump. Yeah, it's a funny uh, safety shot, isn't it? Extension cool. Happy with it. Yeah, nothing easy though here. I mean, talk about edging the ball when nerves are super high. Easily leave this over the side for a doable jump. I, I don't mind him going here at the cross side bank. I really don't if there's enough angle to naturally get on the purple. Just see, couldn't you? Mannerisms, he's going for this. He's got it. 
What a shot. This cue ball freeze along with the purple five makes it very difficult to draw the ball or get a lot on it. Tiny gap between white and cushion. Yeah, putting the extra on it just so he gets a bit more off the side cushion. We were wondering, right, or at least I was wondering, you know, on the fence with that bank shot there, he's played a lot of safeties in that kind of position. I like the attacking, though. Well, we saw this from Shane in the semifinal. Pretty upset with himself here. He's got to regroup. Grossly overscrewed that. We saw that shot an awful lot at the recent European Open. Not so much here. And I think he's got to check the cue ball. Make sure he doesn't flirt with the side pocket where he's standing. That's surprising. The bank to me was surprising. I agree with you, Jeremy. I think you've got to go for the pot, surely. Especially because I think if he thought about the bank, if that was the entire intent while he was at the table, I think you just go ahead and fire it, right? You go ahead and pop it in a bit. Very still on that delicate one. No one wants to escape in this match. Yeah, that's okay. Extra roll. Nice on this nine ball. It wobbled, it jangled, it thought about it, but it fell. Shane Van Boning again on level terms. Shane Van Boning to break. Scores a tie, seven racks each. Van Boning. Can he start a, a circuit authority? Or oh, the five ball does him a massive favour, but the two doesn't. Yeah, I'll tell you, they've shown us a lot, but the pool gods themselves have made this pretty interesting. It seems like almost every rack. Another crazy push out situation. Can't offer the bottom of the cue ball with a direct look. The pink four kind of nestled on the side rail oddly as well. Just going back to that little montage we saw there. The first line from Jim Weich. When he won his first US Open, Van Boning, he was 24 years of age. It's as though these two are tied by history because, of course, Gorge now is 24. Yeah, and really want to learn something here from Shane. I guess he's just got to give up an edge of the one. I, mean, I really don't see much. Love to be able to tie a ball up here while giving up the edge. Extension cool. You know, he could pocket the one on a push out. That is legal. Maybe reposition the two in a, in a bad spot or maybe the cue ball in a bad spot with the blue two sometimes overlooked. When he sees something he doesn't mind. Just good chance he gets this back. Oh, he's going to keep off the rail quite a bit. Better what's your choice. What do you see, Carl? I think he's going to dig on this maybe whoever shoots it coming back behind the seven maybe or the or the red. Yeah, it's an option. How much of this one ball sticking out? Well, he's not looked like giving it back once, so he's, he's happy with something. Is it the six or the two? He's just going to roll roll it slow, Jeremy. Yeah. This is delicate. Playing off the point. <laughs> You'd have 
to say he's gained the advantage. Well, there's enough rail there really to do what he's looking at, trying to maybe pocket this ball. About a tremendous amount of spin, being kind of a low right in the tip position. Nine ball, nine ball, ooh, few ball. Ball in hand. Big looking back, Jeremy, the push out. And please start the clock. I know he was in a funny spot, but a little Too easy, right? Yeah, a little bit too easy. Yeah, I think he did feel like he had a chance to make the one or possibly the nine, but you know, after the break settled, we always knew he was going to be at the disadvantage. But I agree with you, Carl, maybe a little light on the push out. What makes this final intriguing is there's no discernible pattern. Momentum is just flitting between one player, then it goes to the next and back again. Okay, two soft cushions here off the side and then the end rail. Wants to fall very straight on the pink four. Six available and more so the seven, very playable. Position there. Extension cool. He certainly afforded himself plenty of time to play it, Carl, because he called his extension right at the, the start of the process. Yeah, some players might just call it on certain shots just so the beat doesn't. Cueing the ball. <laughs> he has options here. He can follow two cushions back where he's at now. Give him a nice natural off the brown. Come back for the black. The routine has a question mark over it in this match. But this is easier than routine. It's a certainty. Thank you, Rack 16. Better course to break. Leading eight racks to seven. Just seems a given when Fedor goes breaks. It just seems like the one ball always goes in the side pocket. And I know he's awesome with the jump cue, but I don't know if it's on offer here with two balls to go over. He's really close to the black eight, and he's got to carry the seven as well. Really like the kick shot, you know, coming off the right side rail underneath the seven. That would offer position on the red three also. Well, he's got the short cue, so he feels like he can get over this ball. This is really close. Yeah, and he's, again, he's not going to have as much control because of the second ball he has to carry also. 
So he needs some not only up quickly, but to go out as well. That literally put a spring in his step. What a jump. The elevation. Incredible. Yeah, if he wasn't snookered, he couldn't have played it any better, really. And, you know, the last thing I saw him do before this final, before he got on the main table, on the practice table, on the outer ones, was jump the ball 15 or 20 times, working on all kinds of different ones. A real scary situation after he buried that one because again I really think the break is getting better for Federgorst. should doesn't have much currency in this final but really from here he should make it 9-7 and the situation could have been there already in this match a few times probably for both players a two game lead but Going back to maybe looking at that push out that SVB played a, Extension. a pretty simple return, and that's not what you want when pushing out. It's just a hair of inside spin. We are just starting to get to the real empty part of this match now. Only a double figures. Yeah, when you're in this position, you just don't go down any lower. Don't take any chance of fouling that nine. As the result of a break and run out in the. It's, it's just a hard one. You know, Tiger, he did carry the slam, right? But it wasn't in the same year. It carried over from one year to the next. Probably a little unlucky, really. <laughs> Knowing Tiger, now he plays. But the other thing, too, you know, is if he does go on to do it, oh, a dry break. Now's your chance. And we got to look at it. 16 games, and it can only be closer to 8 8. So 9 7 is his. Close as we, we can expect for these two. But what I was going to say is, uh, if he does go on to win this, you know, what a trio he's beaten to win it as well. Josh Filler in the Masters, Eklund Kachi at the Worlds. Now, in my mind, can't say for sure yet, but I think he will go down as the greatest player ever, at least for a little while, SBB. Yeah, that break off from Gores, we were just. Saying it seems like it's wired and constantly pots it, but that just proves how difficult it is because you've got to really get it in the center pocket. Yeah, I think he got himself funny here. You, this isn't the type of shot you want to play to easily get the right angle on the three and not make a missable ball in the side. Rather be playing the three in one of these corners. This is what I mean. He's going to get a little thin or have to take a, a tester either to the corner or the side. Good thing about the side, right? No scratch. The eight's in the way. Just 
just feels like a big moment, this, doesn't it? Just get the feeling. It's not quite on the three how he wanted. No sort of natural shot. Cool. It's not an easy point. It's going into the side pocket. Options on how he could shoot it. He had to dig on the cue ball there. Whew. Real tester. Just hold the rock here for the six in the opposite middle, I think. Just when we were talking about the metronomic qualities of Fedor Gorsh break and how many times he comes up with the goods. In rack 17, it's dry. Giving Shane Van Boning encouragement. Two rails for the side. Pay attention to it. Catch rail first or something on the It's a dry break. And Ghost he's still got to get balls in the pocket. Which he does. Paul was right. That was an important moment. SVB did not want to. Many players mind, of course. The Worlds is there, but this U.S. Open was the first one they really kind of wanted. This guy did it a long time ago, trying to do it one more time. Rack 18. Shane Van Boning's break. Spinning nine racks to eight. Adding that right spin, and I can only imagine that's intended. If this cross side bank goes, I think you're going to see him try to clear the table. Yeah, he's not had much love for the break off the lowest ball, has it? Pretty tight, but I think there is a space. He's going behind the seven, trying to put the one just above the three. Too much. Adrenaline's been going. Yeah, he'll come round and just have a look if that goes past the pink four. The difference, though, of the cue ball being behind that brown seven as opposed to where it is now is yeah. night and day. Extension, yeah. cool. Carl, we talked about it, the Moscone many times, you know, like. He felt good about it, so he was trying to nestle maybe on the seven instead of just laying him on the rail behind the seven, kind of simplifying the safety, maybe allowing Gorse to go to the air, but, but uh, I think you still got to take your chances there if you're SVV. These odd ones have gotten Gorst a few times, the tactical ones. because that one was going to be near the pocket, snookered or not. He would have probably been able to get at it. That's the shot he's faced with. It doesn't look like there's an edge. If there is, it's, it's very, very thin anyway. Extension cool. Yeah, you just maybe size up trying to kick it in the lower left corner, just past the side. Oh, he's curving this. Wow. I mean, he's trying to make this or dive the cue ball down for safe. Easy. Let's hit this shot. I think he's 
pretty happy, Carl. Well, I'd be delighted because, you know, when you're playing them swerve shots, how many of them do you play in a match? It's not like you're going to go and practice them, is it? So that was the intention. A half-hearted chance of making the ball, but he knew if he misses the double kiss, this is what he may leave. Watch out for accidentally pocketing the ball with the cue ball coming behind the seven. Hit it with pretty light speed. This is going to get away, though, a bit. Not as much as I initially thought. You can see this. We are at 9-8, and I think it's fair to say, other than the break, everything else has been pinpoint level, hasn't it? Even the safeties are just creeping out. Rearing up here. He wants the speed to be right. Maybe a hair heavy. Forrest will cut at this with the blue two on the opposite end. Several safeties in this rack alone have been not quite as accurate as they are normally when Gorscht or Van Bolinger at the table. Yeah, can he, he sees on the left side of the ball, so trying to go between the three seven, maybe at the two ball. Where's Off with the two timing. Ball going? Sorry, Carl. It's been pretty consistent, in my eyes. A, just a little quick sometimes with the with the stroke for Gorsh. I'll tell you one thing I've noticed with Fedor over the, the times we've been comes. He, he either pots the ball into middle or he misses it by a long way. There's no in between. <laughs> How about this for a stroke? Yeah, he needs a friendly bump. Yeah, I was a little worried about that one. But he does have, you know, no hampering with the queuing, so I like him from here. The crowd, they want to see six don't they they want to see history they want to say i was there i was there when svb did it right. using the side real bit nice friendly bump there just to hold somewhat this is odd as well yeah you're gonna say you say friendly but don't look very friendly. Well, maybe he would have went into the three, which would have been better. Coming between the six, nine. He just cannot get on the ball. He's played three very nice pots. The cue ball. Just don't want to go where he wants it. Yeah, I don't know if we'll see it again, but I think that was just the three ball. Getting caught maybe to the thick part of the pocket. That's why he contacted the green six. Is he looking for a kick and stick here? SVB with a kick and stick. That was delightful. It really was. And this kick and stick could do the trick. Although, never, ever right off Gorscht. <clears throat> yeah, most players recognize that shot, but don't want to really shoot it in the moment. type of shot when it's so close and you have to carry the cue ball. If you miss hit it any, you may not even hit the pink because the cue ball will curve. You can try and defend against him, but he's got an air force. Oh, the speed may fall underneath this. This is going to get tricky. A little bit anyways. Open to the seven, I mean into the nine. I thought it would pass the nine and go a little more towards the eight. Let's be thinner than we even 
think you're in the booth. Pressure shot pulled off by Walsh. We've talked all week about his superior jumping skills. It led directly to him winning rack 16. And the same thing applies in rack 18. The first animated fist pump of the match. Shane Van Berning was a little unfortunate there. Better of course to break. Leaving 10 racks to eight. A rare dry break in his last attempt. You wouldn't expect that again. Uh oh. New ball is going to escape the scratch and dress up for a shot. The three's a little covered up, but I think he's got a natural angle. Get up by that side pocket and just get a look at the red three. They're a bit tricky, Phil, but they're there to take a three game lead. I think that would be our first of the match. You think correctly. Yeah, he's just trying to come over to the left, leave that gap in between the nine. Eight ball. Looks to be pretty tasty. Looks to be pretty good. Yeah, and the one thing you notice and you can learn from Fetter, and of course the same from Shane, is he really didn't kind of back off there, right? He made sure he got that nice bounce so he could cue the ball nicely. Dig on the ball, spin it if he wants. Extension cool. Do you pull this coming two rails across the angle a little bit for the pink or do you come between the nine and six with a little inside? I think that's tough. Got to pull this two rails below the seven, I think. Some of the balls that have rattled and fell in here, Jeremy. I mean, just a, a couple of weeks ago at the European Open, some of these balls have stayed over the pocket. Yeah, and, you know, we have the black top ones on the outer right, and these are the, it's the diamond wood, but I wonder if maybe it's just a hair different. I know the conditions really make a difference with the heating. What interests me is if he hits that to the center of the pocket, the cue ball's overran by some piece. Yeah, catching it as thick as he did actually did him a, an immense favor. Ideal on four to drop ideally on five and so on and so forth. It's going to stop <coughs> nicely. Too much angle to make it nervy pocketing the six, but too little to move the cue ball easily across. Gorged in the process of establishing a substantial lead. Three racks easily overcome early, but maybe not so late. Yeah, no foregone conclusion that Shane gets back to the breaking in in this match. That's just nine ball pool can be especially with the best but I'm still interested to see if he just does get back to that end if he just starts to really unload on the rack 
This is going to be the fourth break and run out that SVB has been on the receiving end of. Walsh, three in front for the first time and needing two more to win the US Open. Making the one ball all week, high percentage of the time. He's praying he doesn't land on the lowest ball. Two's coming up with the cue ball. This is going to dress up pretty nicely. It'll be a little goofy getting on the three correctly to get on to the four, but you know, once they get in line with that first shot, they usually run the rack. Let's put it this way, Carl. He'll take it. 100%. Just one more rack away from getting on the hill and he does get to 12-8. I feel like he'll get some sort of chance, don't you, at some point. Yeah, and really looking at the rack now, I think he can just simply come one rail, kind of on the line where the two's at. And there's a path to come a couple cushions between the six and eight to get on that pink. Don't take your eye off the prize with this blue two ball. Those sides are brutal. Extension, cool. And Shane, what's going through his head? He left on a perfect shot and hasn't shot since with the kick and stick. Said before, JJ. Yeah, and he knew it right whenever he delivered the cue. You know, the thing is, I talked about it. Wow, that was far off. That wouldn't have gone on a five inch pocket, but I said it before, these balls cut a little easier, so you have to be aware of that. Is something else. I'm like, I'm looking at how I'm going to shoot that two ball. I'm shooting it like half the pace that he had right there. Okay, watch out for the lower right corner. Okay, he got into the cue ball nicely. When Gorsh broke dry in rack 17, Carl quite rightly said this is a very important visit. The same applies here, really important. Looks like he's going to level out. Oh, he's elevating to go into the nine. I thought he'd level out and go into the seven to play the purple in the opposite corner. Oh, yeah, caught it a little thin. Watch out for the cueing. That was just because he overcut the pink to the pocket a bit. Before Shane played the kick and stick, to which then Fedor jumped the ball in. In that very same rack, he was losing the cue ball. Didn't get the cue ball where he wanted. He's lost it here. Watch outside pocket. Yeah, good shot. Very good safety. Don't leave a combo on. Yeah, and he can actually take a chance. Fouling here, but also just clipping the purple off two cushions and then have another chance because the purple won't be playable even with ball in hand. So this won't be just kind of hit at be like a medium speed just past the side. Will not hit this heavy coming in, that's for sure. You played it lighter. Foul strokes, all in hand. Please start the clock. What happened there? Yeah, he didn't recognize the shot I was talking about, trying to come two cushion and just nip the five. And again, if you don't, you just give up ball in hand. Now, Shane, is he just going to use the six here, Carl, or does he try to go all the way behind the seven off three cushions? 
sort of thing. Distance is your friend. Extension, cool. I kind of like just the six coming two cushions to the left middle, you know, the left middle diamond on the left side rail. <laughs> I think this is okay. The only thing you don't want to do, you don't want to open up the eight much and leave some type of rail first off the left side of the six. It's going all the way to seven. I think it's got to go. He's not going to be happy with that. Yeah, just the pace seems to be catching him out. It's final. Yeah, now, does course go for a bank he can cue very nicely? Does he go for the same type of clip on the right side of the purple? That's the difference, you see. If Shane gets the back rail and the seven's in the way, Ghost is in a bit of trouble. SVB's got the advantage, but this could just swap straight back over. Okay, it's a little shy as well, and this ball will cut, you know. Yeah, really shocking he didn't get a bounce off the bottom cushion there. You always want to at least get to that cushion. It's easy to shoot in between there, do it all the time. Lots of gorged safeties in the semi-final and the final haven't been telling at all. It's back in the purple back down. Use the nine, I think. Good stuff. Really good. Yeah, he's very good at that type of shot. It's a shame. the seven really impeding what he wants to do with the purple still he's done all right I mean a lot of pressure here and a long shot yeah huge pressure this is long don't be fooled by your TV screens thinking this is this is an easy shot it is not counterpoint this is Shane van Boning he crunches them in like this on a regular basis Not looking for something unfortunate. Wow. Hardly any pocket. Yeah, have to show us this super thin one to the upper right. Everything else is super touchy, also. Yeah, whenever you. I say hit and hope, Jeremy, but whenever you take that little gamble, it's not always going to pay off, is it? Thing there when you're behind the balls, you doubt they hit a little bit. Yeah, white and object ball close together means that even for the very best alignment, sometimes a little bit of guesswork. Yeah, and again, good thing for Gorse, the seven, very playable. Just really put the onus on the thin six. Hill is beckoning call. It is. <clears throat> Magic number six. Shane is looking a little unlikely. And if he goes on to win, Fetter and certainly get to the hill here, but oh my. Oh my. So definitely still off with the stroke a bit. That wasn't about the contact as much as the delivery. What I was going to say is, again, another match just kind of went in all kinds of ways. Yeah. 
Yeah, even that went in a little bit fat, didn't it? He was not playing for the corner. Sure he wasn't. The tightness in Fed Augusts Q arm is clearly extreme. Makes that stun off those type of shots where a lot of players would roll and off a little bit. Shows. to play. Cue ball. Ooh, it was maybe heading towards that side. Snookered on the brown seven. Seems like it's been the brown seven and the blue two involved in a lot of these pushouts. Really, if you look at this match for Shane, when you talk about Fetter getting the rolls, at times it's really Shane getting some kind of really unlucky rolls. Remember the jump on the two with the scratch off the seven? You know, the ball he just made there to end up very funny on the green six in the last game. Yeah, that's the way it works, isn't it? Head to head, mano a mano. One man's bad luck is the other. Good luck. Yeah, and he's going to do it here with a push out. That was his last break of the match, but he's going to put that into a jumping position. Shane, it's your choice. Now Shane, I think, has got to pass it, to be fair. Oh, but Please play again. But if Federer makes this, I mean, it's... Almost like it was really Extension meant to be cool. the way he made clear the table. Well, one thing is for certain, he'll get close to this jump shot. He'll hit it pretty full. He's going to go near this pocket if he doesn't go in. And really the type you you want, he gets to use a little longer part of the jump cue, more power. Just got to kind of stop the ball. a stop or maybe even stunning forward a bit. Guess he's pretty amped up is what it is. Yeah, had the two gone in, he would have been hooked on the three. Snooker, or most likely not. But he might take a chance at kicking it in the upper corner just because Snooker was pretty hard to get. I think you got to bank the two back at the three, really, here. Try and get as much to the left as you can. He was looking at the two from an early stage, but there wasn't enough juice. That was with you, John. Just a little bank back up on the table. As food he's not had much table time. He's clearly under the gun. You've got all them balls in the centre of the table. He was a big favourite to come away with something good. Yeah, and as close as this ball got to that double bank, it actually made things a bit more odd, even though it's not really missable. He's going to lose the cue ball drawing off the six if that's the case. He drew it straight. So this guy's not done. That was a little bit special, wasn't it? That really was. Simply superb. Set up nice and again, really interested. See what he does with the break. Got to get out here first, though. Could go forward to the rail here. A little natural off the green six.
Hard to knock him coming for the side, but when you don't get ideal, you start to become a little awkward. A lot of pockets for the eight, though, so that's going to help. Yeah, at first, I thought it should kind of stun past the eight, off the back rail, and just back out. I'm with you, Carl. I didn't want to draw the cue ball. I think that caught a hair of the knuckle, but it wasn't enough to keep it out of the pocket. First glance, looks like he's gonna have a shot. He is gonna have a shot. It's not bad, this. Well, it seems like he cut the one a bit more to me. Got a lot of action on the rack. Hmm. He is almost as good a starter as he's had all match. Can he ease it and go by the pink? The pink in the opposite side. That's what I would look at. May have to go to the bottom rail and back up. Tip position will tell us all what he's doing. Body movement. I think the heart's pumping. Yeah, it, it, this is a big shot now, isn't it, JJ? He's got to just make sure he doesn't leave himself a little bit weird on this green six. And it's easy to do that. He sort of has done that, so now he's got to rip this one in. Yeah, and he stays a little more in the middle with the stroke. I don't think the cut's that bad. We saw Federer Gorston up short on a similar play. Good positive strike. It really was. Yeah, not the type of shot you want to roll. You know, maybe in practice or whatnot, but the distance he'd like to stun this a hair, maybe get somewhat straight on the eight. Dragging it in. What a time this would be to deliver only your second break and run out of the final. Yeah, win or lose, though. I mean, he's shown a lot of heart with these outs. Yeah, he knows if he gets a chance, he doesn't take it. It's not going to be six. Better nip this ball in. He's going to be on double figures. Here they are on the Shane Van Berning Legion of Fans. They would love to see a full scale comeback here. Winning 12 racks to 10. One's high. Watch out, cue ball with that spin. Layout you really couldn't get any more simple to try and get this title. And please stop. I'll tell you what, I had a premonition there. I just thought he's gonna scratch it. I just knew it. The air has gone out of the balloon in this room. And again, probably not on the positive side of the roles in this match, but still have to give it to Feder Gorston. What a layout here, on Carl to 
try and get this title? Yeah, now whenever you get to a final, you find yourself on the hill. What you can ask for? One go, one attempt, and Jeremy rightly says when you look at the table layout, two connects to three easy, three to the pink, fours a doddle, and the fives on the left, so is the seven. And it's going to be the eight in the corner and just stun nine in the middle. I mean, these are a thousand out of a thousand in practice. The only thing that stops him, the situation. He's just really perfect. Not too much angle, but just enough to move the ball easily off the rail. Can't foresee any problems, really. Yeah, we know there's a lot on the line here. Keep talking about the fact that if he was to win the US Open, he'd hold all three of the big ones at the same time. And he knows that, but the fact that you know he beat Villa Hill Hill at the Masters, he beat Catcher Hill Hill at the World Pool Championships, he's got serious metal about him. He's gotten a hair on the... You know, bad side of this pink it's not much I wonder if he just holds or goes to the rail and back out again his bread and Extension butter cool. does he stay on the short side simplifying the purple or does he go what he likes to do which is the heavy stun heavy stun makes the purple missable really consider the soft draw here maybe to the back side of the seven in some sort he won't be taking anything for granted complacency is an enemy in this kind of situation but that could be the key that could be the one that puts him in heaven yeah it was center cut and again just thinking about how many different ways this guy has won some titles it was seven breaking runs in the masters for josh villery over overcame that overcame eklund kachi arguably he's definitely one of the top four guys along with filler of course, the ones that were at the table now. He's an American, playing for America and residing here, but you know the crowd was looking for number six for Shane. There's still time for Van Boning. But 2024 surely will not be his time.